quick call. I'll make my quick call. You know, the, the biggest thing about the DED is the fact that it comes with a lot of things you can and cannot do with it. And a lot of times when you agree, you pass the BDD up front, you don't necessarily agree with all the terms in the in the BDD itself. So this is something we can spend the money even if you don't agree with it or not. Similar to the, the generator, you know, I think it was about 50-50 if I remember right, on the vote. Some of us didn't agree with it, some of us did. It's still an expenditure whether you agree with it or not. It's just one of those things, well, you have to decide whether you're going to spend it or not. The only thing I have a problem with this particular issue is that the property owner right now is getting off scot free. And I do have a problem with that. But I also know that something has to come down, not dumb enough to think that we can just let it sit there for a couple of weeks. But I think the city as a whole would be better off to acquire the entire property, tear all three buildings down, be done with it now, instead of fester this wound up for another probably six, eight, ten months. And it's going to happen again. And I don't see, if he doesn't have the financial wherewithal to do it now, I can't see that changing in the next year or two. So he's probably not going to come up then. And I would think that. Mr. Coleman would probably have a better rate on demolition if he was doing the whole project versus trying to peel out a building in the middle of two other ones, which is kind of difficult to do in itself. Uh, so I just, I, I wish we would end up with the property. Whether we can get it sold or not, I don't know. Maybe we can turn it in the parking lot, maybe we can donate for a park. I don't know what we do with it, but at least we'll have something in the end for our efforts. One particular alderman told me we could turn it into a dog park. There you go. That was not me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just an idea. All in the drive. <laughs> I, I want to. I want to also give Megan, a, you know, a compliment too, because she also was oh, questioning me. Up. Uh, she was giving me the same kind of questions that Kathy was. I just happened to answer Kathy, so she was on top of it. So right. but I think tonight the motion is <coughs> to uh, approve the contract, waive the bidding, subject to uh, Mr. Parker signing off on that affidavit. That we have to have that to be a commission. And then when you do the order, do the same thing. And then I don't know if he can wait till Thursday, if he's going to take it down tomorrow, fine. But Thursday, you may have another BDD ordinance to, to, to pick up the other two. Roll call. Kathy Driscoll. To be clarified, just on taking it down with this. This is the contract for Joe Coleman okay. waiving bidding. And subject to Mr. Parker signing the affidavit and consent. And subject to the uh, adoption of the BDD ordinance in your next uh, business later on here, this one, the next ordinance. Because you got to have the ordinance adopted to expend that BDD funds. Yes. Yes. Leland Yes. Jim Mullins? Yes. Crystal Tenney? Yes. Megan Bryant? No. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Burdell? Yes. Are you going to No. Motion passes six to two. Mr. Mayor, with that motion, you ought to go back up on the discussion of the opinion letters and just get a motion to uh, authorize the submission of the Benton Associate letter to IEPA and get it with a quick permit. So we need a motion to approve the letter to submit it to the EPA. To submit to the IEPA. Everyone received this tonight. Yeah, that's what you read. That was email. Correct. Motion email. by Alderman Bud, second by Alderman Olive. Roll call. Subject to uh, subject to uh, the BDD ordinance be amended to provide provisions that requires Mr. Parker to repay the city for the cost of demolition with the inclusion of an option for the city, assuming Mr. Parker does not repay the city, to acquire the subject property after demolition, demolishing the building without any payment to Mr. Parker. I'm sure you'll send me that in a minute. I will. Okay. It's in the 
and subject okay. to the execution of the, re of the development agreement by Mr. Parker that the ordinance requires. Right. Okay, now if we amend this down, all the members of it, if we amend this down, and the question is, we have a special meeting on Thursday night. I'll pick we'll up the other two. That. I'll pick up the other two. We'll pick up if, the other if two. If that's going to be the decision. Right. So okay. we have an answer. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So we have a motion to approve this. Motion by Alderman Spell Second. Second by Alderman Rosati. Roll call. Jim Ollie. Yes. Chris Gopetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? No. Larry Bud? Yes. Tom Burdo? Yes. Ernie Dorchin? No. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanza? Yes. Motion carries six to two. Now. The next motion is just to approve that affidavit that we've been talking about. I sent out to the body that was, we're asking Mr. Parker to sign. Motion to approve the affidavit and consent to demolish property concerning 204 East Main Cross property to be executed by Travis Parker in the form as prepared by the city attorney and in such form as the mayor and city attorney may approve. I need a motion to approve that affidavit. <coughs> motion by Alderman Budd, second. Alderman Manzotti, roll call. Chris Colchetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? No. Larry Budd? Yes. John Burdo? Yes. Ernie Dorchin? No. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Ollie? Yes. Kathy, I didn't hear your vote. I'm sorry, I said yes. Yes, motion carries six to two. Motion to approve the consent to remove adjoining brick wall concerning 204 East Main Cross property to be executed by Rupesh S. Patel in the form of as prepared by the city attorney or in such form as the mayor and city attorney may approve. And Mr. Patel has already signed this, so we just need a motion to approve it. <coughs> motion by Alderman Bertel, second by Alderman Scaltetti. Comment. Comment. Uh, when, this, when this wall comes down, uh, address the fact that uh, Mr. Patel was going to put up a uh, wooden wall. Right. Uh, I think that Mr. Uh, Goodall ought to be involved in that to look at that situation over well as you right. and uh, on also with the uh, uh, structural engineers to, uh, to clarify that if there's any uh, structural differences between that building so we don't have to go back and, and look at Mr. Patel's <coughs> business because how it could be affected with this disturbance uh, disturbing of the, uh, of the wall coming down on this property. The agreement that he's signing is he's waiving any damages to oh, okay. that. Well, I wasn't and aware also that. for him to put that uh, back wall up, you'll have to get a building permit from the city. Yes. So we should be protected. Okay. Okay. Andy, comment? That roof runs north and south, so um, it's not going to affect that in any way, shape, or form. It's basically just closing in that wall underneath those trusses. So the left weight bearing part runs north and south, not east and west. Right. Alderman Driscoll. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, question, just to clarify, we are taking down that that wall at our expense, but through the BDD, does this gentleman have any insurance that would help him in that situation? I did not ask him if he had insurance. He, uh, he volunteered. We talked to him. He's already hired a contractor, so as soon as that wall is taken, is demolished, and he will have a contractor there. I don't know if that's his. I didn't know if I'm his sure insurance would have was some, anything to he, us. Yeah, I don't know if he'd have legal recourse against uh, Mr. Parker or not for this, but I he think seemed very cooperative there. Right, the very cooperative. He was just anxious to get rid of it. <laughs> Alderman Bertel? The suggestion of a piece of required out of the building for me for the way I guess it was. It's up to you. It's up to you, sir. I'd ask the motion. Okay. Larry Bud's going the other direction. He's trying to make the city money. That's what you said. This, this poor guy, he's just guilty by association. He's just a neighbor. And now he's got a part of, part of the building on top of his building. And he's going to get tore down. He's going to have a hole inside his building. He's lucky. He and he's not it. asking for any of this. I, you know, I, if there's somebody here to feel sorry for, I feel sorry for him. Do we have any idea what the building permit fee would be? I don't know if you would need one because all you're doing is you're not changing the square footage in any way, shape, or form. You're, you're, you're just changing the wall from brick to wood. You'll need a building permit. It's a structure. It's a structural. But you can waive it. He's saying the way the building permit. I don't think there would be much more than 30 or 40 bucks in the I'll pay the building permit. Okay. All right. Okay. So 
a motion and Barry in a second. So roll call. Craig and Brian. No. Am I good? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Motion carries six to two. City attorney update. Four quick matters, folks. Uh, the 1600 East uh, Water Main Extension Project with the Davis folks. The documents prepared will be handed to Mr. Speaker. Here you are. He's coming by. Uh, they'll, be, they'll have those in hand tomorrow. Uh, the GSI easement documents are completed. Mr. Speaker will get those tomorrow so we can get them signed. Um, Thursday, uh, well, tomorrow we're having another teleconference on the Cobblestone Hotel project. And then I think the plan is on Thursday at the Finance Committee to discuss the proposal at length and to get some input from uh, you folks as to what direction you want to go. And then finally, uh, the Park District, the mayor has had a couple of conversations. And at this point, we do not have the uh, storm sewer easement sign and there's some resistance that they want the city to convey the park the, the golf course to them in exchange for the easement i don't think that's going to be on the cards that's where we're at so we're still working with that any questions right. oh, probably not related to anything you just said but just out of curiosity we were discussing some issues that uh, the city's having with the, the park district with the easement at the james park and who owns, does anybody in here know, I could go to the courthouse, but, and if Earl was here, I could ask him, but who, who is, does anybody here know who owns the golf course at property? That's a good question, and I wish, I wish, uh, uh, I don't know, we haven't done any title work on it. Maybe Earl does know. Do but we know the address? That's the issue that has been raised, is supposedly 40 years ago before my time, your time, there was some kind of a alleged or, or arrangement City only the golf course and, and a, uh, some kind of a agreement that the park district could use it. So I've not I've not seen any document. We haven't researched that far, but that's surfaced and, and uh, we don't think that's a fair exchange for us. I don't know if I can write from what I've been told and what I've heard. Fifty three years ago in nineteen sixty seven, the city owned the ground. They leased that ground to the park board for a dollar a year. As long as they use it as a golf course, then the park board would have control over it. Supposedly in 2009, the park board came to here when they needed expense, needed money for the irrigation system, and they were shot down by the city council. You were on that council at the time, I think the only one. Brotherton was the mayor, and they sort of relinquished said it was a 40 that it had to go back. It had to go to the park because it was for over 40 years the term of the lease. Back when that was put down, but a lease could be more than 40 years in the So when I asked them about the easement, they asked about if we would give them the land where the golf course is now located. And and so that's where the issue is. I'm going to go to the park board meeting Monday night. All we're asking for is a simple little easement mm -hmm. right along the right of way. <laughs> It should be no issue, but again, yeah, let me see what, let me 20 foot it. wide to put your storm sewer in. So they want to trade the easement for the <laughs> golf course. If in fact, we still own the golf course. Yes, right. If we still own the golf course. They according want to, trade to them, we own the golf course, according yeah. to the park board. Well, I'm against that. Right. Why? So if we own it, why do we need an easement? We don't no. own James Park. No. We don't own James we don't Park. Park golf course. Can we, so. can we talk to the trader? That is something we're going to develop when they complete at the park board meeting next Sunday. Okay, mayoral report. First of all, I'd like to address a couple of issues from the last few days. The recent collapse of the building. Our first thought is the safety of all Tedeville residents and visitors. My second thought is to get East Main Cross open. Friday, my thought was to get fly high business open, but due to the coronavirus, we have a couple weeks to take care of that issue. So I thank the alderman that voted to approve all those things. The most important two weeks of my administration will be the next two weeks. I would like to, and I'm gonna read my public, my press release to the public tonight. I would like to reiterate to the public to please try and stay home 
and limit your access to groups, including but not limited to church, congregating in grocery stores, or any other public gatherings. Please limit personal contact with others. Please use, utilize other avenues to communicate, such as cell phone, landline, internet, or email. If you have symptoms or you are not feeling well, please first call your doctor's office or local walk-in clinic. Use the phone. Do not go there and put other people at risk. Do not go to your doctor's office or the emergency room at the hospital before calling them first. If you have any questions or concerns about your health or your family's health, please call the Christian County Public Health Department. That number is 824-4113. Please alderman write that down. Also, anyone in need of food, I had a call today from a lady. She doesn't know how she's gonna feed her three kids. I directed her to the, the food pantry. They're open tomorrow from 8.30 to 10. The schools are taking care of the school children, lunch and breakfast, and our police department and our city hall has offered to help them in any way. What I heard today, they are going to transport the food on buses to bus stops and help the kids get the food that way. So I think that's a great idea. Anyone in need of food, please call the mayor's office or call, and I can direct you in the right direction. The council meeting scheduled for tonight, which is all here, will be open to the public, but we request that you contact the mayor or your alderman with any specific concerns. We would like to limit access for the safety of our city officials, superintendents, and other management. We will not be doing a Youth of the Month or Volunteer of the Month at tonight's council meeting to limit access to the city hall due to safety concerns. Also, we have set in place limited access within the municipality for the safety of our employees. We have increased our cleaning routine to several times a day throughout the municipal building. My number one concern as mayor, as I've stated, is the health and safety of not only our employees, but all the residents of Taylorville and Christian County. All health and safety issues will be addressed by Greg Nemo, as he is the coordinator for the Montgomery Christian County emergency management team. We will work side by side with Health Officer Andy Goodall, Fire Chief Aderman, and Police Chief Wheeler, and we will work as diligently as we are able. This is bigger than the tornado. If any one of our employees need anything, please contact me at my office phone, 287-7946, or my cell phone. We will put a freeze on spending, a freeze on hiring, and I urge all superintendents to only allow overtime in emergencies. We will work closely with state and federal officials as more information becomes available. We will release this information to the public. So please, stay home and, and call people before you go anywhere if you got any health concerns. Thank you. Committee reports. Discussion and or motions to approve, adopt, and or deny, and or table, and or amend, and or refer to an appropriate committee and whole or in part the matters regarding the following subject matters discussed at the committee level. <coughs> Personnel Committee, Alderman Lanzani. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motion to recommend to the City Council to bid and or advertise an office level one position in the City Clerk's office to be filed pending successful completion of a 30-day probationary period for deputy clerk. I'd like to make that in the form of a motion. So moved. Motion, for, motion by Alderman Lanzati. Yes. Second. Second. By Alderman Bryant. <laughs> Questions or comments? Just a question. All we just discussed so? having a hiring freeze. I know we need that position filled. Is this a conflict? I mean, is this something we have to do if we're talking about freezing Hiring. I'm just asking because you just said it. Well, that's a question. This is filling a position. It's not hiring okay. a new position. Okay. Uh, my only thought on that, I think that person is needed in that office. Okay. If if we're not on so-called this coronavirus uh, thing for the next two weeks or four weeks or six weeks, is this something that we can, can delay? Uh, that's my only question. And uh, I know Mr.
Mr. Bud feels strongly about different things like that, but uh, that's up for the council to decide. And so we got a motion and a second. So, Alderman. Mr. Bud, what, what are you, you voting yes or no? Again, the position probably needs filled. Well, I understand. So I, I mean, are you, you going to vote yes or no? What's happening starts, it's going to start happening tomorrow. It's going to have an effect come June. And I listened to the president today on there, and they're expecting this could go as long as up to June or July or August. Now, you want to know the truth? Property tax will start coming in in, in June. But if we don't receive funds, these sales tax, and this gets as bad as they're predicting, where are we going to have all the money to meet all these expenses? I would be voting no. Not, and, and I told you, I agree this probably needs to be filled. But I've given you from my perspective, finance chairman, we have to be cautious what's going to happen here in the next few months. Um, Brian? Quick question. Okay, so this is a position we're still paying, right? Right now? Is this position? Okay. So I guess I guess I just don't, it, it's not like we're adding new debt. And it really is, is pay for one employee for four months is that going to make or break the city to be honest with you and julia correct me if i'm wrong we'll be replacing an office level three with an office level one oh, so, so we will get some reduction in pay correct, correct. okay that's Alderman it i'm Myrtle. done you know, just, i mean i don't know if you guys realize this but the city clerk's office is pretty much the heartbeat of the city there, there's no way that i'm not i'm not sure if julia's ego or not but there's no way that office can get by without this position. They do too much work in that office. Right. Matter of fact, they do, they do most of the work when it comes to everything that involves the eight of us or nine of us. So uh, I don't know how you can, if we're gonna cut back, it'd be the next day, not this first one. Right. Any other questions, comments? Roll call. Larry Bud? No. Sean Myrtle? Yes. Bernie Dorchinez? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanzati? Yes. Tim Wallace? Yes. Chris Coltetti? Yes. Megan Bryan? Yes. Motion carries seven to one. Motion to recommend to the City Council to hire 18 summer seasonal help for the 2020 season. Uh, HBO 1, Street Sewer 7, Cemetery 5, Water 3. <coughs> And like to. I'd like to make this in the form of a motion. Motion by Alderman Monzati. Second, Second by Alderman Dorchness. Comment? Yeah, Mr. Newberry, um, you're going to get five people, and you still have other people that this summer when when those students are here working? No, that, that counts everybody. <clears throat> That's five college and or staff quick staff the people that you've been hiring over the years from Springfield is there any I'm, I'm just thinking can we eliminate those people because all the, can't the college can't a college student do the same job that those people from Springfield do uh, I don't know where you're going from well, where I'm coming from is we could the, the college students we don't have to pay them as much as we pay the people in Springfield they, so, they don't come until May, and I need help before May. We need to quick staff people that start in April, I would say, and the college kids don't come until the end of May. Okay. And the problem is, if we would lay off the quick staff people in the spring and the college kids were here, then we'd have a heck of a time hiring them back in the fall, correct? Alderman Bryan? Um, I mean, and, and, and I could be wrong, but most colleges are pretty much going to be, I don't think they're really going back. So I think there's a really good chance that our college students could be arriving home much sooner than we're used to. So in that case, maybe we can fill it with more college students, you know, sooner than the expensive quick staff. Just an idea. Good idea. That that would be a good guess. I mean, we don't know. I think but, they're already all back. I think all the colleges are done. Yeah, I and they're not sending them back. Yeah, 
I'm just saying it might be worth reaching out to, you have the people you hire every year, correct? I'll, I'll probably have three college people, and then I'll try to get by with two quick staff through spring. Yeah, and maybe ask your college friends if they have other college friends that are home, you know, how quick do you want to start and just get the cheaper ones going. Well, what, what I think all the Brian and, and all the universities are saying, can we hire college kids and not the quick staff because if we pay the quick staff like 15 or 16, we pay that to that company for that guy they set it up, and we're paying the high school or college kids nine and a quarter. It could be possible, but uh, the quick staff is a lot more experienced. I've had them back every year, and I have one college kid coming back with experience, and you know, it's whatever you guys want to do. Well, so maybe if you can cut your quick staff back to two with three it college. Is, it oh, is, it is a two? two? Yeah. Cut back to nine. This, this is two. This is five extra people, right? All together, it could be two quick staff and three college. Three quick staff, two college, okay. because I don't know what I'm going to get. You know, I think this year. Well, I think, well, really I think it's worth asking our college workers if they're going to be back sooner and can start mm -hmm. sooner. Mm -hmm. Just e even if you still do the quick staff, at least then you've got people coming up. You if know. I can get them back sooner, I will because I'm going to need them. Mm -hmm. Right. We got 120 acres out there and 18,000 tombstones, and we buried six people this week. You should be happy for that. Hey, and, and also, uh, college kids can only work up to six hundred dollars a week or a year. A year. Then you have to start paying on the IMRF and uh, put the job up for bid. I don't know. That's fifteen weeks or four dollars. All of them. All of them. I think you know we're, we're going back and trying to figure out. Well, we're gonna, and I really got the feeling that this summer is probably going to be different than any summer that we've ever had in the past. Uh, I mean, who knows? Who knows what financial shape uh, the city will be in if we can afford any college kids? I mean, we're, we're, we're filling positions within the city of, of employees that are, uh, it, it could be that uh, we might have some tall grass this year just because we, we can't. Uh, and I know you try to keep the airport looking nice and do a very fine job. Of well, it. we but, also take care of the airport, too. Well, and uh, all of them. But this could be a year that, uh, you know, that we can't afford to take care of things in the normal fashion. And I think we're, we're kind of, we don't know. So I, I hate to, uh, I hate to try to vote on something that, that I have no idea what kind of shape we're going to be in. And I just got the that feeling that it's not going to be a good summer. Alderman Gurgle? Yeah, just for the sake of argument, I mean, I mean just because we approved the motion to hire the personnel doesn't mean we have to hire. Well, I, I understand that. No, number two is, I don't know why, we can't really take one off HBO, I don't want to just take one off each one of the numbers across the board. That way everybody's one person short. That'll save the numbers and just, you know, mayor or human resources, somebody has to keep track of the money versus how much needs and what department and just kind of go by that. Just because we pass it doesn't mean we have to hire. No. This gives the superintendent a Well, who knows? We might all be quarantined in your house, so, so then what do you do? All of good. Just to give you a little bit, come July 1st, the minimum wage goes to $10 an hour. If you hire the eighteen hundred or the eighteen people right here at ten dollars an hour, that's eighteen hundred dollars an hour that we're going to be spending. I'm not saying these people are not needed by any means. That's one hundred eighty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But then you take that money eight hours a day. Okay. It doesn't take long. That's going to add fourteen forty. Take that times five. Seventy two hundred. Easy to run. Take that times eight weeks. <laughs> Fifty six thousand. Fifty eight thousand. It adds up. I'm just letting you guys know. To be My concern is is being the finance chairman, where are we gonna get all of our finances? The last thing I want to see this city do is have to lay off our full time employees. 
But if times get bad, we, we don't know what's going to happen. And if any of you are watching the news, and if this goes on until July or August, I'm going to tell you what, this is going to go into late fall, early uh, winter. And when you come back here and you say, where are we going to get the funds for some of this stuff, I'm going to be able to tell you. I told you so. I hope I am wrong. But we have to prepare ourselves what could happen down the road. And I'm not saying Julie needs that person. And I'm not saying that doing the, you're doing the wrong thing by voting for it. I'm doing, what, as finance chairman, what I think is right for the city at this time. So vote them in, but don't say that I didn't tell you. Well, I think if we vote to hire them, we can always not hire them. Say we're going to hire them. They expect to be hired for the whole summer, but we can't give them that caveat to get out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could go on a little spill, but I'll show you. All right. So there's a okay. motion then to just to solicit applications for 18 summer slash seasonal. Well, most of these people have worked for us before. I don't know how many applications we've got. Uh, a lot has already come in. What's that? A lot of applications have already right. come in from people that worked last year. So, can this wait until we find out a little bit more and we can approve it in the April 7th uh, council meeting? Give us a little bit. Give us a little bit of time to see where we're going. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, uh, there may be some service workers that, you know, it's not college kids, there may be some service people that are going to be out of job for a while that could actually take the place of the college kids for a stack week. It needs to start in April or May. So, I mean, there, there'll be there's potential for plenty of people to be out there looking for jobs. It's something maybe we should have to see. Uh, okay. yeah. There's going to be one there. There's going to be several that are going to need jobs to help pass it. That's fine. Good point. So, do we want to table? table this? Motion to table. Motion to table. Second. Bowman endorses. Second. Second. Bowman and Zadi. I think that's good. Roll call on table on this. Do we have to, uh, we, do we have a motion on it? For we have a motion to table and you second it. Yeah, but so I mean, that's what we're going to vote. We wipe out the first that wipes out it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this is a vote to this table. Sean Bernal? Yes. Ernie Norton? Yes. Kathy Norton? Yes. Leland Dutty? Yes. Jim Alford? Yes. 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 Is this the table? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Can make one zero. comment? One comment, short. I'm looking here. Again, this is where I'm coming from. Look at our sales tax for last year. Uh, for example, uh, October and November, 237, 218,000. If we lose that revenue, there's payroll. We, make, we may make that if toilet paper off. I'm not sure. All right. All the numbers on the next slide. First thing. Okay. <laughs> Motion to recommend to the city council to bid or advertise a full-time dispatcher position in the police department to bring the total number of dispatchers to five. And there again, this will affect what Mr. Bud. Motion by Alderman Lanzati. Second. Second by Alderman Bryant. Comments or questions? Comments or All right. It says total dispatchers to five. Have we always had five? Yes. Yes. When in the past we've had five and then four. Right now it's a part time position that they're wanting to bump up full time. Because they're having to pay them full time stuff anyway. Right. And we're having to pay overtime because we need to have a certain day off. So you're making the argument that this is going to save us money? Correct. I think we would have been. Oh, that comment. <laughs> Just remember if this one's going to cost you benefits. No. <laughs> yes, I'm voting. No. I told you. That's all I need to know. Oh, we're not paying benefits now? No, no. Not until part-time. Part-time. That's not going to save money. Well, we're paying them overtime. We're paying plenty of overtime. It's a benefit across the right way. I understand. Right. The city council has to approve it. Okay. Right. 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 Right.
is we have a hard time giving the part-time guy enough hours. I think lately we have been giving him plenty of hours because people are continually either taking days off, vacation time, and things because the chief thinks it was very good for the budget if we would hire a fifth over a fifth guy with overtime and sick days and everything. A lot of that I understand that. It's, it's temporary. At some point it's coming in and then you guys can come back and ask the personnel at a later date and a couple months or something. So I would be able I, to do that. I agree. Okay. This passed through personnel committee, I think unanimously, but like I said, times have changed yeah. since since March fifth. So there's a motion and a second. So right. roll call. All in all. Uh, during the, the committee discussion, wasn't it? Uh, do we have to, and I'm asking this as a question because I truly don't know. Do we have to pay benefits to a part time after so many hours? No. no. They're trying to keep him under um, 59 a week or 59 a pay. But if we go over that, Um, they didn't want to keep him under the, the rate. But if he goes to 60 hours of pay, do we have to pay him benefits? Probably. Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. So. So. Well, and that's what I thought. But it depends, like, you have to add that up for the whole year, basically. I guess. Well, I mean, there's got to be some reason they keep him below 59. 60 must be the magic number. Well, we, we try to, but we don't, we, we don't know right now if we're going to be able to do that. Has, has there been instances where we've gone over that? There was a couple times where he did go over um, during that week, but the second week he might have been under an hour. But um, it depends on it. You have to take the whole the hours that he's worked, and then um, you can't go over so many in the whole year. Kind of like the library, they're at 58 hours. So once they get close to um, their, if they work more then they have to cut back by the end of the year. But then, uh, and maybe the library would be a little different from my understanding. Well, their IMRF as well. The would, would be something that you no couldn't insurance. cut back on if you need them. Somebody has to be there to, to answer the radio and answer the phone that uh, I guess they have recently had to transfer some calls to the county. And they, can, they can't continue to do that because the, the county is busy enough the way it is. So, my question was just, I mean, the benefits, I understand Larry's position, and uh, I don't know, th this one here is, is kind of a tough call because it is a position that uh, you're, you're answering to the public, and then the public depends on somebody to be there to, to answer the phone. I was the chief behind you. No, he's not here. Call. Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Ollard? Yes. Driscoll Teddy? No. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? No. Tom Riddle? No. Motion carries five to three. Mm -hmm. Emergency <coughs> services. All the way Driscoll. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mine's quick and easy. I'm not asking for any money or employees. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I'll entertain a motion to recommend to the City Council to allow Chief Baderman to apply for an AFG grant. Motion by Alderman Driscoll. Second. Second by Alderman Bryant. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Lincoln Airport. All in the door tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the first motion that came out of the Lake and Airport Committee meeting was a motion to recommend the City Council to direct the City Attorney to amend the City Code 7 4 6 to extend the length of boat docks on a case to case basis. I'll make that in the form of a motion. I have a comment after a second. Motion by Alderman Dorchinez. Second by Alderman Scaltetti. Comment by Alderman Dorchinez. Mr. Romano, this is what I was going to talk to you about. Um, the ordinance currently says the maximum length of a boat dock to be built uh, 25. is 25 feet. Okay, and what what this, this wording is kind of bad. What we want to be able to do is to change that. That's what we, we discussed. Right. To change it to allow for a maximum of 40 feet. But we want to be able to do it on a, on a in other words, if, if somebody just comes in and says they want to build a boat dock, you say, you understand, right now the ordinance says 25 feet, 
to go beyond that, 25 feet to 40 feet, we're gonna look at those on a case-by-case -case basis to approve it, and uh, <coughs> what we would do is the late committee take a look at it and make it a, 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 a recommendation to the city council, and I called IDNR, and they said, is it to see if there was any restriction on that, and they said that there is not, but they cautioned me to make sure that uh, we're gonna approve it to be like 40 feet out, that it is a safety issue, and you just wanna make sure that if they put a 40 foot dock out there, that you're not gonna have skeeters running into it, et cetera. So that's that's what we wanna put the ordinance. Yes. Roll call. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Beth? Yes. Tom Burgos? Yes. 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 The next motion was to recommend the City Council to direct the City Attorney to amend City Code 7-1-4 to allow two campers on Lake Lot on a case-by-case -case basis and to amend the Lake Lot lease to reflect the changes. Um, I'll make, make a motion and uh, and then I have a comment after a second. Great. Motion by Alderman Dorsen, second by Alderman Spilatendi. Comment, Alderman Dorsen. Yeah. Once again, Mr. Romano, I need to visit with you about this because there's a um, what, what, there's significant changes. You're going to have to rewrite the whole thing, yeah, because of the two campers on a lake lot. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, for example, we want to be in, have in there is that we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot. We don't want to have two campers on a lake lot and and be stealing from ourselves. Here comes a, a person off another lake lot. Now I've got an empty lake lot and not able to to rent that lake lot. So um, I need to to talk to you about that. And then there's some um, some values in there, some dollar amounts on several different places. And um, I wanted the committee, I wanted you to do this first, and then next month we would uh, insert the dollar amounts. So you don't have to do that when you, when you look at it. And if you have any questions, you can call me. Got it. Do you, okay. can, can I make Alderman Bryant, yes, you can make Do you want to wait then to even vote on that till we have that information? Like the dollar amounts and everything like that? This is just a direct the city attorney to change the ordinance. It's not passing the ordinance. My bad. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Right. Don't tell me he's good. <laughs> Roll call. Larry Beth? Yes. 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 No. Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Did we have a revote? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The last motion to come out of Lake Nair committee meeting was a motion to recommend the city council to forward fiscal year 2020-2021 late budget to the finance committee. I make that a motion and I have a comment. Motion by Alderman Dorchinez. Second, Second by Alderman Scalatelli. Comment Alderman Dorchinez. Um, when we did this Thursday night, um, I, one of the things I didn't see in the budget, and I talked to Larry Bud about it today, and he's gonna, he, he still has to, to um, um, review it, and I think it goes, how many times is you guys gonna review this, Larry? It'll be one time, one that's time, it. then we'll forward it to the uh, treasurer for so, the final. All right, so one of the, the things that was left out was, I, um, normally what we do is take, everybody does that, they take the last year's budget, and they put it over here on another sheet, Jackie does that, and then there's the lines in there, and then, you can see what was budgeted for last year and how much was spent, et cetera. But what we left out was dredging the lake. We didn't put that in this year's budget because it wasn't in last year's. And so I want to put that in there and I told Barry, just put $10,000 in there on the revenue side and on the expenditure side. All in favor? No. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Water and environmental. Thank you, Mr. Burr. Well, everybody knows it. Water and environmental the expenses that come out of the water committee does not affect the general fund. So before we get in a big conversation about money, not <laughs> if they don't know that, you should know that. First motion was recommended to the city council, direct the mayor to sign Flocker change order number five in the amount of $20,630.40. I'll make that for the motion. Second. Motion by Alderman Bertle, second by Alderman Bryant. Questions or comments? Roll call. Yes. 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 Yes.
and 41 cents for the work performed related to construction of new water treatment plant from December 22nd, 2019 to February 29th of 2020. I'll make that close. Motion Bowman and Bertle. Second Bowman and Driscoll. Comments or questions? <coughs> Roll call. Are yes. 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 Roll call. Kathy Driscoll. Yes. Leland Yes. 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 Yes.
that we had some issues with some buildings, particularly 204 West Main Cross, or East Main Cross, I'm sorry. But some of you may know that I've had some issues with some buildings in my neighborhood down near the park. Um, I've let some of you, you know, I've, I've told some people about this. Um, these are dangerous buildings. I'm talking, and a couple of the people were in attendance tonight. They, whether they owned the building, their names were tied to the buildings, they were in attendance tonight. Um, I researched these concerns in the ordinance uh, book that I have. Um, they fall under dangerous buildings, and I may be beating a dead horse here, but um, the building, the roof on the building down near the Ice House, um, near the railroad tracks. I believe that, that Mr. Parker was or is tied to that building as well. That, and if I may, that building, and I don't know how this happens or if it did happen. Supposedly Parker claims he owns the building, but it is on railroad property. Well, the railroad has told us with numerous times that they are in the process of tearing that building down. I assume that's why he bought these three buildings on East Main. If you're talking about with that wooden shed, yeah. yeah. I believe, and I think you've heard the same thing at, at other meetings, the railroad is in the process of tearing that down. I just didn't know if he had a long-term lease and now he's got another property that you guys are involved with and throwing money or going to have to put money towards. I will talk with the railroad tomorrow or the next day to see what their plans are, but I was told, I think three or four months ago, that they planned on tearing that building down. Okay. And my other issue is the ice house. I understand that it possibly has changed hands. I've had two calls in the last two weeks, and and Mr. Chief Aderman is aware of one of these calls, um, with them burning inside of that structure. Um, I believe there's no roof on part of that structure. Um, I just, I, I feel like we, if we have a means of getting into these buildings, which I, I, I believe we do through this ordinance book, whether it's HBO going, able to get in, or whether it's the fire chief, or whether it's the mayor, I feel like when these buildings are changing hands, with whatever they're going to do, we need to we need to address these buildings. By changing hands, you mean ownership? Or whether it's own, yeah, I think Kirby just sold that building to somebody down by the old okay. Ice House. Well, I will direct all or HBO officer did all to find out who does own that building. Uh, as everyone knows on the council and some of the public, I have this cleanup committee mm -hmm. that I've formed and we have some money in that account. And I think that this will be a good use if I can, I don't know if, if our fire chief or Goodall or myself can honestly condemn a building without a structural engineer. I wouldn't but, ask for them, to, I, just to be able to get in and, and see them and, in, and whether they're inspected or just to see before a firefighter would have to right. go in there and yeah. respond and to I've the been fire. told they were burning something. Was that from you, Mr. Aderman, or? The, they did it twice. The first time was at night. The guys went there and burned inside. They put the fire out. The guy's name and phone number the next day, they gave it to me. I, the name was a false name. The phone number wasn't a real phone number. Imagine I went to the building three or four times, banging on the doors. Nobody was ever there. The second time they went, I told so I told the guys, they go there again, take the police, write an ordinance ticket, whatever. The second time they went there, um, they took the police with them. And I, I don't know if the uh, ordinance ticket was rolled by the police or not. There's there's no roof on this building. And I could see the flames going up the side of the building. Whether it's burning in a burn barrel inside, it's inside the structure. And I feel like, you know, if you guys are going to have to respond to a fire, you, you need to know what you're getting into instead of having a building that nobody's went in for years. Whether it be 50, 60 years, nobody's went into this building and seen what it's like on the inside. The windows are boarded up. I, I just have an issue. I'm gonna ask the city attorney, can, can we have a legal right to go in that building? And, and who would have that right? Your HBO and the fire chief probably under the uh we can find a code section, probably. As you know, the other day, the building at 204 East Main, our fire department, uh, you know, broke the door into. 
others. Right. And is that something we can do? Well, we did that with the consent of the owner. Right. Maybe a call, uh, the HBO can call Mr. Kirby tomorrow and find out who he sold it to and get the information there or make contact that person. Ma'am? Carol Ansley, I'm next door to the Ice House, the beautiful Ice House. In 2014, the roof fell in and it fell on our property. Some, I think, probably I reiterated that you all know that story. Bernie Ber Kirby owned the building and his insurance did pay for damage to one of our automobiles, which then was destroyed, but that's beside the point. Uh, at that time, when I was up here, he was, Bernie was instructed to get a structural engineer to go in and look at the building. And to my knowledge, it's never happened. And now, tonight, I personally went over there and asked him, I heard you sold the building. Well, yeah, I did. It's on contract for deed. Uh -oh. But he told me that nobody could live in there because the insurance wouldn't insure him. And he had to, years ago, whenever they stopped having apartments up there, that the insurance, that's right, closed the apartment business in that building. But now the door, is, you can drive by and see that door's been knocked in again. It's just a mess all the way. Like you said, the windows all boarded up, and it's just an eyesore. And Another brick fell from third story down and landed. If I'd been walking by, it would have hit me in the head. And I know they said, oh, the building's going to fall down, hurt somebody downtown. Well, it's going to fall down, hurt somebody there, too, because right. it's just unsafe. It's the uh, tuck pointing's gone, and the bricks are loose. And well, exactly. as was mentioned earlier, we do have an ordinance about an unsafe building. We do. So we can write of an ordinance violation. Yes. So I will direct. HBO officer Goodall to first try to find out who the owner is, write him an ordinance violation, and put sort of in his pocket to see what he's going to do. We can keep increasing the fine yes. per day right. and see, and then if he would allow us access, we will get a structural engineer down there and see if we can't get it in there. Doesn't that go against everything we just did with Parker? We didn't, I mean, we didn't write him an ordinance violation. We just went and paid him. I didn't know it was dangerous, his bill. I really didn't, and I've been in it. I've, I couldn't tell if it was dangerous or not. The problem, the roof was gone six months ago. The problem that happened the other day is the second floor came down. Right. And three months ago, I was on that second floor. So at that time, it was holding me. <laughs> All right. So the contract for deed is, doesn't go to the new owner until it's paid off. Right. So Bernie still is responsible for that until it is paid and the deed is transferred. <coughs> so that's that correct. Right. And that building has been in an unsafe condition for how long have you lived here? He's probably the record title. 20 time. years. Yeah, it's probably been unsafe at least 15 of those 20 years, if not longer. Uh, and uh, Mrs. Inslee, she's had a car crash. She's had, I don't know how many bricks and pieces of building fall on her property over the years, numerous times. I, I, yeah, we've, we've heard this before also. Yeah, before you were married, it's been going on for right. eons. 